Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you have a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Buckle up, hit that like button, otherwise I will punch you in the throat, and let's just jump into it. And to start things off today, let's talk about some quickie news. First up, a story that has a headline that will at the very least make you pull back, if not full on cringe. Police seized 345,000 used condoms that were cleaned and sold as new. This being reported by state media in Vietnam. According to the state newspaper, the owner of the warehouse where they found this, they said they received a monthly input of used condoms from an unknown person. Oh, how did this already creepy story get creepier? Also, reportedly a woman detained during the bust told told police that the used prophylactics were first boiled in water, then dried and reshaped on a wooden phallus before being repackaged and resold. Which on that note, at this time, it is unclear how many of them were sold. So uh, enjoy that nightmare. Then let's talk about this controversy around a couple out of Utah. This because a clip that they put out on social media went viral showing their six month old water skiing. With that video going viral, you had a lot of people saying, oh, that's so awesome, it's so cool. But you also had a lot of people saying, no, this is bad, they're endangering the child. Right, so there's this wave of backlash, they're receiving comments like, no hat for the baby on a hot day, legs look like they are going to break, I hope CPS takes the child away. People also saying the infant could drown. Right, the American Academy of Pediatrics saying that they can drown in a matter of seconds. At that age, they have a lack of neck and muscle control. But also with this story, I would note that the American Academy of Pediatrics says infants should be within arm's reach whenever they are near water. And there I would say not only is the child decked out in a flotation device, but literally the father is right there. You also see him reaching out every now and then to make sure everything's good, safe. Also, according to reports, the parents said that this boat was never exceeding five miles an hour. Also the father saying that there were between 10 and 12 people involved, a couple of doctors, a nurse on the boat. Also saying their pediatrician signed off on this stunt, which by the way, Lil Rich is now a record holder. And to me, it feels very much like this situation just got blown out of proportion. I personally see it as very fun, very cool. I also, I went to the, the father's Instagram account and saw they, they even essentially like trained this kid on land first. And I'm a big believer that if you're in the position to be able to, and you can do it safely, Give your kids cool experiences and opportunities. But hey, those are my thoughts on this situation, and of course, I'd love to know yours. Then, some quickie internet entertainment news. One, it appears the reality of a David Dobrik launched social network is getting more and more real. Remember when we last talked about this, Dobrik announced that he was looking to hire people. This to turn his disposable camera app into a full-fledged social network, which it appears he is now going to call it Dispo. And the updates to the situation is one, according to TubeFilter, sources say that an announcement about the company's first funding round is on the horizon. But also two, even before that, the company has made first key hires Reginald Augustin. He's been named Dispo's first engineer. He's also a former machine learning engineer at Twitter, previously working at Amazon and IBM, as well as Brianna Hawkinson, who will be lead designer, reportedly having spent three years designing the new Adobe Lightroom product. Like I said last time, this is gonna be a very interesting thing to watch, and if anyone can pull this off, it would be a David Dober. And then the other bit of internet entertainment news, and it's so weird to say this, it appears that musician Tayo Cruz, right, known for hits like Dynamite, he has been bullied off of TikTok. You know, I will say, over the past week or so, I'd be scrolling, I'd see Tayo Cruz, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Then, like I always do in three to 10 seconds, swiping away, not thinking about it ever again. But apparently his experience was incredibly negative because he ended up posting, never in my life have I had a more negative experience than the past few days on here. Take care of your mental health and be kind to each other. For those that have love for me, thank you. This community is not for me. You know, following that, we saw a number of reactions, including some big profile people there, like from Dixie D'Amelio who tweeted, y'all bullied a legit music artist, which is known for being one of the harshest industries off TikTok in under a week. Is being top comment worth it? Will that help you sleep at night? You were literally causing mental and possibly physical harm on another human being. Does that feel good? And as far as what Cruz was actually on the receipt, end of and what happened after. We saw Cruz posting to Instagram. Thanks to everyone sending me supportive messages here and on Twitter. I'm definitely not going back to TikTok anytime soon. My body was shaking and I had suicidal thoughts. I pride myself on being mentally resilient, so the fact that I felt that way shocked even me. Cruz going on to explain some users posted hateful, mocking videos, which spurred a feedback loop of negativity, where more and more people began to join in on the mockery and hate. And going on to say, social media shouldn't be like this, sadly it is. And you know, with this story, it, it makes me wonder a few things. Like, one, I think we're all aware that the internet can get very toxic on pretty much all platforms. But I do wonder with TikTok specifically, if the possibility for that is increased and maybe even supercharged because of the way that the, the whole platform works. So much of the platform is based off of trends and people jumping on them. Your For You page is based off of the content that you've been paying more attention to, liking, interacting with. So does that inherently, even if accidentally, create a situation where people are incentivized to pile on? And like even Cruz said, it creates this loop. Or I guess maybe even more accurately, it starts like this, but then it gets bigger 
bigger and bigger and bigger. And based off of your experience with any and all platforms, I'd love to know where you think the, the, the best community is, where this is least likely to happen, where it is more likely to happen, right, based off of what you've either witnessed or experienced yourself. But I guess, if anything with this story, let, let's use it as what feels like a needed once a week reminder. You never know what other people are going through. And even if someone is a celebrity or they've been a celebrity or whatever, remember that they are a human being. I think a lot of people think when they say something about a celebrity, they're never gonna see that or they're not gonna care. That is not the case for a lot, and I would even argue most. From that, I wanna share some stuff I love today, and today in awesome, brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, an online store, a whatever, Make it with Squarespace. Squarespace empowers people of all kinds to create their online web presence or launch their passion projects, and it's a place so many people trust and where everyone can find and make a home. It's also easy to see why. There is nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Creating a beautiful website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform has never been so simple. It's extremely intuitive, easy to use, including fantastic things you usually don't even think about until way after. Things like gaining access to their award-winning marketing tools and analytics, and you can get personalized support from their award-winning customer care team via email or live chat. Whatever you need, they are available 24 seven to help you out. And so if you wanna check it out, see why so many others love it, they trust it, start your free trial today over at squarespace.com slash Phil. And of course, make sure you enter in offer code Phil to get 10% off your first purchase. And the first bit of awesome is I think next week I might upload the first vlog that I've actually done in years. I think I just need to do something that's not this for a minute. Possibly put a smile on a face or two instead of just being the perpetual bringer of sadness. And if I do that, it'll be over on youtube.com slash DeFranco does. Then we got Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts with Alicia Keys. We had Zach King answering TikTok questions from Twitter. We got the trailer for The Queen's Gambit. We had Pokimane donating $10,000 to random Twitch streamers as kind of a give back. If you wanna see any and all of what I just shared, the secret link of the day, really anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about a situation that starts with this. Win, lose, or draw in this election. Will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you commit oh, to making sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transferal of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Uh, the ballots are out of control. You know it. And you know who knows it better than anybody else? The Democrats know it better than anybody else. And I know some of you watch that clip and you're like, I, Phil, I cannot believe that. The same man who, what? The same man who has spent a part of almost every single day for the past few months making Americans doubt the legitimacy of an election and a man who constantly jokes about serving more than two terms? He said that? I cannot believe it. Although, I mean, of course he gave this answer. The man still hasn't conceded the fact that he lost the popular vote back in 2016, even though in the United States of America, it doesn't matter. He's still president because the electoral college is a thing in the United States, but even when he won the presidency, he couldn't concede that he lost even in something that was ultimately super Official. So the idea that in 2020, when he has all the powers of the presidency and the executive branch, and he has he's surrounded by people that have enabled him, like that's gonna change, what are you, new? But my thoughts aside, back to the story. You know, following Trump's remarks, we saw a lot of Democrats condemning Trump, saying this is not a dictatorship, that the peaceful transfer is a key part of democracy. But also, notably, we saw a number of Republicans pushing back on Trump's remarks, this including the likes of Mitt Romney, who tweeted, fundamental to democracy is the peaceful transition of power. Without that, there is Belarus. Any suggestion that a president might not respect this constitutional guarantee is both unthinkable and unacceptable. Representative Liz Cheney writing, the peaceful transition of power is enshrined in our constitution and fundamental to the survival of our republic. America's leaders wear an oath to the Constitution. We will uphold that oath. We also saw Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell chiming in this morning, tweeting the winner of the November 3rd election will be inaugurated on January 20th. There will be an orderly transition, just as there has been every four years since 1792. Though we did also see some Republicans defending the president, like former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker tweeting, smart candidates never concede anything before an election. They focus on what it takes to win. Media could ask Joe Biden and Kamala Harris if they plan to concede on election night or drag it out for months. But to Scott Walker, I would say what you are talking about, what Trump seems to be talking about are different things. A big note, a big education point, because still I think a large number of Americans do not understand this. It is very likely that we will not know the winner of the 2020 election the night of the election. This thing may drag out for days or weeks. Votes have to be counted. There's a ton of mail-in voting this year. It's gonna take time. In fact, the Trump campaign's taking actions that could delay it even more. One instance, for example, just last week, we saw reports that his campaign and the Republican National Committee, they asked a federal judge to stop New Jersey from starting the counting of mail-in ballots 10 days before the election. 
election. It is because of another lawsuit they filed against the state for sending mail-in ballots to voters in the first place. They want that settled. And I mean, the Trump administration and the RNC, they're suing a lot of other states over similar policies. This may also be something we see more of as we get closer to the election. And so the election doesn't end election night. The end of the election is when all of those votes cast are counted. But then you have Trump being specifically asked about a transfer of power after the election and his response included throughout ballots. And then today to try to smooth things over, I guess you had White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany saying the president will accept the results of a free and fair election. He will accept the will of the American people while also at the same time, once again, continuing to rail against the legitimacy of mail-in ballots. Also, part of the reason I mentioned that is this news we're seeing now with Facebook. You know, they, a few weeks back, talked about changes that they made at the beginning of the month. This including not running new political ads the week before the election, as well as adding labels to certain posts, including posts made by politicians who declare victory in an election before the final results are in, which is a real concern here because in-person voting is expected to look vastly different than what the voting's gonna look like once mail-in ballots are counted. In addition to that, earlier this week, Facebook's head of global affairs told the Financial Times that the company will take serious steps to restrict the circulation of content on the platform if the presidential election descends into widespread chaos or violent unrest. And actually, yesterday you had Facebook announcing that it would be expanding its policy, preventing politicians from declaring an early victory in posts, and now will also reject ads where politicians say they won before all the results are in. Though there was also a criticism there because you had a lot of people saying that was barely an expansion of the other policy. It's also part of a kind of broader criticism that we've seen a lot with Facebook, that they roll out these so-called sweeping changes that are either barely changes at all or end up not really being effective. We've seen reports about major flaws with the systems that the company has put into place. According to one report, Facebook has allowed political advertisers to target hundreds of misleading ads about Joe Biden and the U.S. Postal Service to swing state voters, ranging from Florida to Wisconsin in recent weeks, in an apparent failure to enforce its own platform rules less than two months before Election Day. With that report also going on to note that ads being run by both pro-Trump and pro-Democrat PACs, ones that appear to violate Facebook's guidelines, have been left up and attracted millions of views. But going back to the notion of, of conceding and defeat a, a transfer of power voting. I mean, we're getting to a point where it is becoming more and more widely believed that this election will be decided via litigation. Legal technicalities like the concern out of Pennsylvania about naked ballots, right? There's a fear with a lot of mail-in voters, including a ton of people voting by mail for the first time. The tens of thousands of mail-in votes will be invalidated because a ballot is not put into an envelope that is then put into another envelope. This because of the recent ruling by the Republican-controlled state Supreme Court there. And regarding the court battles, I mean, just hours before he made those other comments, Trump also publicly said that he wants to quickly appoint a ninth Supreme Court justice to fill RBG seat in case the election outcome ends up in the court, saying, I think this will end up in the Supreme Court, and I think it's very important that we have nine justices. I think having a 4-4 situation is not a good situation. Right, so with that, you had people saying, this is Trump clearly trying to rush an ally onto the court, essentially put someone on his own jury. But for now, that is where I'm gonna end this, and if there is a note that I can end on, and I'm not speaking to the Trump voter because I think if you identify as a Trump voter, there's probably no movement there. If you are someone that is even remotely close to on the fence, and when, when you see reports like this, you're like, maybe this is overblown. It is not overblown. I was born, raised, and fed American exceptionalism. Or we think something can't happen here because it's never happened here. The stuff that we're talking about, the potential undermining of democracy, that was always something that happened in other countries, in different times, because of lesser people, maybe. Maybe dumber people who couldn't see it coming. Right, if I was in that situation, I would have stood up. I would have done something different. But then, in any and all of those situations, you remember, those were human beings too. Everything is possible everywhere. No one is immune. And I think the reason that so many people, including myself for a while, didn't realize that things were getting this insane is because it's been a slow turn of the dial. How many times have you thought, how did we get here? It's the gradual turn. I mean, how? Even just in this last year, think of the reaction when we found out 100,000 Americans died from COVID-19. And then compare that to when we passed 200,000 dead from COVID. You get desensitized, but if there is a point that I can end on here, the only thing that can stop that from happening is if you take action. You don't act because you feel like it's a lost cause. That's when you lose. That's when it's done. That's when the story is over. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna end this story. News, my opinion, and of course, with every story like this, resources in the description down below to register to vote, to make sure your registration is still good to vote. Resources to find polling stations, including early voting. I know a lot of people are now thinking about doing early in-person voting rather than mail-in voting because Trump has trumped about the mail. Yeah, that's where I'll leave it. Don't be complacent, don't be defeated, move. Be the change you wanna see in the world. And that is where I'm going to end today's show. As always, thank you for being a part of these daily dives into the news. Also, if you're new here, you should definitely subscribe and hey, maybe even text me at 813-213-4423. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you next time.